Das letzte Unternehmen, was hier gleich vorgestellt wird, ist das Unternehmen, was mich in den letzten drei Jahren am meisten, wirklich mit Abstand am meisten beeindruckt hat. Der eine oder andere von euch hat wahrscheinlich schon mal im Lebensmitteleinzelhandel online gekauft, ja, bei Rewe Online oder bei einem anderen Service. Und ich habe die Erfahrung auch schon gemacht, dass man dann nur neun von zehn bestellten Produkten bekommt und dann vielleicht der Erdbeerjoghurt von Danone nicht da war und der Picker, der es aus dem Regal genommen hat, dann gesagt, dann nehme ich halt den Kakaojoghurt von Danone, muss ja auch so gut schmecken. Und in unserer sehr, sehr servicelastigen Online-Experience akzeptieren wir nicht mehr, dass wir nicht die Produkte bekommen, die wir bestellen, nicht mehr zu der Zeit bekommen, wie wir sie bestellen und bei weitem auch nicht mehr zu dem Preis bekommen, den wir eigentlich irgendwo anders wo gesehen haben. Und es gab über Jahre in der Online-Branche die Diskussion darüber, wann wird endlich dieser 200 Milliarden Markt Online-Lebensmittel oder Lebensmittel in Summe in Deutschland so ein Stückchen stärker über den Onlinehandel geprägt. Wir sind momentan noch bei irgendwo einer Milliarde bis zwei Milliarden. Und es gab immer diese These, nee, das wird keiner schaffen und bis wir mal fünf Prozent erreichen, das wird ewig dauern. Vor ein paar Jahren hat sich das Unternehmen Picknick auf den Weg gemacht, aus Holland genau das Gegenteil zu beweisen. Und mittlerweile sind sie in den Orten, in denen sie seit zwei Jahren aktiv sind in Holland, ownen sie über zehn Prozent des kompletten Lebensmittelwarenkorbes, also in der Region 10% aller Ausgaben, die getätigt werden für Lebensmittel, werden schon über Picknick getätigt. Sie sind die günstigsten, die verlässlichsten, sie haben eine extrem niedrige Lieferschwelle, also 25 Euro Mindestliefer, äh, Mindestlieferwert und verdienen auch noch Geld dabei nach einem Jahr. Und das sind solche, das, das hat so viele Wow-Effekte, dieser Case, da könnt ihr euch sicher sein, dass in den Führungsabteilungen von Aldi, Rewe, Lidl und Edeka das Thema Picknick extrem Relevanz hat und ich begrüße jetzt den Gründer von Picknick, Michael Müller, direkt eingeflogen aus Amsterdam heute Morgen, nur für diesen Vortrag auf der Bühne, damit er euch mal erzählt. Ja, Thank hi, you. Michael. Thank you. So he's going to tell you why it's cool, why the business model is cool <laughs> and why it's cool to work for Picknick. And I really, really advise you, if you have the chance for Picknick, and I know they're hiring now more locally in Düsseldorf and the area, if you have the chance to work for this company, Do it. Really, really, really do it. <laughs> well, thank you, Alex. That was the best introduction ever, for sure, especially here in Hamburg. It's great to be here. Thanks for, for coming, you all. Who of you know Picnic, uh, apart from the introduction by Alex, of course? Okay, that's already quite nice. Well, we, we are a very simple business. We just bring all your groceries for the lowest price free to your door. Günstigste Preise gratis geliefert. Everybody wants this, so uh, that's the way we started back now, sort of a year ago in Germany and a bit more than three years ago in Holland. And let me just take you in five to ten minutes through this model a bit, why we started it, but also why we think it's going to be a big success uh, further down the road. Well, first of all, this is a picture showing a bit the, um, the way we came to the idea, and this is also explaining a bit why this is such a special market. On that side, you see all these markets like electronics, uh, fashion, uh, travel, books, etc. Of course, we all know as consumers, we buy those stuff online. 10, 20%, 30%, 40%, etc. Except groceries. Only 1% in Germany, maybe 2.5% now in Holland, maybe a couple of percentage points in France, but really, really very small. That's one. Secondly, if you see who's the online leader in any market, and this is a German example, but this is the same across Europe, the online leader is seldomly also the offline leader. So you're the offline leader in retail, traditional retail, you have all those stores, you have the best conditions in terms of buying, you know the market, but it's apparently very difficult to also become the online leader. That's two. And thirdly, and that's the right-hand column, that's of course a very nice column for us, the market for groceries, Lebensmittel, is as big as all the other markets together. So if you add fashion and electronics and travel and books, everything together, then you've got groceries. So the conclusion was by far the biggest market has by far the lowest online penetration. And that's not very logical because doing groceries is not very funny. I mean, it's Coke, it's diapers, it's detergent. I mean, it's not really fun to do your milk. It's every day is the same. So why would that be? And we found out that there's two reasons for us not doing online groceries. First of all, 
We don't want to wait two, three hours at home waiting for your milk to arrive because you have to be at home for groceries. For fashion, your neighbor will take it. For groceries, probably not going to be a very nice neighbor after a while. So that's one. We don't want to wait for two hours and we don't want to pay for it, for delivery. Because all the other markets were broken because the online option was cheaper or at least the same price as going to the store yourself. And groceries is the only example worldwide where having it ordered online is more expensive than going to the store. Hence, nobody does it, only 1%. So we started Picnic by drawing sort of a traditional supermarket. You have suppliers, you have all your distribution centers, and then you have a couple of hundred supermarkets. And of course, we drive with our cars and in Holland with our bikes to the stores. Then these guys also started to do deliveries and they added sort of their delivery van to their whole supply chain, making it longer, making it more expensive, and also, of course, charging delivery fees. And by having delivery fees, it means that you have a premium product. A normal family will never start to buy online because you have to pay six, seven, eight euros delivery fees while you have a supermarket around the corner. So that was the model, and we took this model. It's completely different. We don't have any supermarkets. And supermarkets is a huge cost factor. You have the building, you have the electricity, of course, you have all the people that work there. You have the high rents. So it's really a lot of costs going to the supermarkets. We don't have that. And we spend that on doing the picking, uh, the order picking, putting all the groceries in the basket and bringing it to your homes. And the special thing about this is, is our last mile solution. And this is unique worldwide. And that's because that's the reason that we can do it for free is that we have the milkman model. And the milkman model is very simple. We used to have it also in Germany, the milkman. Very simple. The milkman all only came once a day to a street. So on Monday it was 3 o'clock, on Tuesday it was 7 o'clock at night, on Wednesday it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And we have copied that model, meaning that you have less choice as a consumer. But for us it means when we drive into a street and we have three deliveries that day, we can do them in one go, make it far more efficient. And for the consumer, the benefit is also that the milkman is always on time. So we have a 20 minute time slot and basically we deliver on the minute precise. So if this time slot of five o'clock in the afternoon suits you well, every Tuesday you will order on Tuesday your groceries. You also create a lot of habit. Now we've been doing that for, for, for some years now. This is a, uh, an example of our app. We only have an app, so it's an app only business. No desktop, nothing. So you always have your grocery list in your pocket. That's very nice. These are little uh, distribution centers. We have now five of those. This was our first one, very small. And the last one is now 20,000 square meters wide. So it starts to be uh, a bigger business. And this is also special to mention because these are our little vans. And as you can see, they're sort of atypical. These are the vans that we've made ourselves. Why? To have them exactly suited for online groceries. The delivery of online groceries is difficult. It's different from a normal package. You have more temperature zones, you have food, etc. But also, we've created this. So when they come to people's homes, they just open up the canvas and they can get their totes easily out. Because they have, don't have to go inside the vehicle, the vehicle is a lot smaller. So you can park it most of the time in front of people's doors, so you don't have to walk 2,100 meters. So everything is thought in terms of making it one software platform, of course, but also having a special supply chain only for online groceries. Now, this has been the result. So these are all lines of penetration of app downloads and customers in any city in Holland and Germany. And the German cities, we are now active in Dusseldorf, uh, uh, Viersen, Krefeld, and München Gladbach. They are going even faster than the Dutch cities. So this really has landed also in, in Germany. Now, this is basically what I started off with. We have not a premium product, but a mass market product. Uh, this is the first time that you can buy your groceries online for the same price as going to the supermarket. Lowest prices, free delivery, meaning that now everybody can do it. Also the nurse, also the teacher, also the fireman. Everybody can now do the groceries online. And this means that the market grows enormously. And this is the effect that we see in every city. Today we have now, um, let's say, uh, a couple of cities. Uh, last year we had 60. Today we have already 100. And we're now expanding quickly into Germany. Um, vehicles, 800 of these vehicles we have produced so far. Probably by the end of this year we have doubled that as well. 
Lots of people, uh, we built all the software ourselves. We have 100 developers in Amsterdam and in Dusseldorf. So it's really starting to be quite a big business. And two countries, Germany. So we are really happy to be here. Hamburg will maybe take a bit longer since we're now in North Rhine-Westfalen only for the moment. It will take us a bit of time to get to Hamburg, but we'll surely get there. And we hope really to see you later on as a customer. Thank you. So now imagine the moment, 2005, when Amazon was still small and there would have been somebody at stage telling you that's a company, one of the most valuable company in the future in 10 years from now. That is your moment right now. <laughs> this is, uh, believe me, I promise it. That is one of the companies that will be very, very big in the future. Not because the business model is very smart only, but the more important point, and that's something we need to discuss, is that the um, incumbents like the Aldi's and Reves, Eka, they do have a very, very, very hard time to copy this model. And maybe you can, uh, and I try, actually, I try to bribe uh, Michael a lot of the time, and I even offered him uh, my personal investment <laughs> if he is coming to Kiel, my hometown, uh, because we have a lack of uh, uh, online delivery services uh, like, like Picnic. Uh, but can you tell us, and you're allowed, uh, you're now in the um, in, uh, Netherlands uh, since 2015, 2016. Yep. What was the, um, the business answer, like the strategic answer from, uh, from your big uh, brick and mortar competitors. I think it's um, Albert Hein. Uh, Albert Hein is the biggest, yeah, and Jumbo. Yeah. And so what was others. their response? So I think their, their the response was really interesting, especially in this time of the of the of the of the era. Is their response was cannot be done. So it is really interesting. Eh? So you say it can't be done, basically saying uh, free delivery online groceries can't be done. But saying that in today's world, with all new technology, with globalization, with people acting completely differently, with technology coming to people's homes, saying it can't be done. Why it happens in front of you, because we were driving around. I mean, of course, I understand what they're saying. They're saying it can never be profitable or something. Oh, that's fine. But the basic, uh, let's say, um, uh, question should be, how do they do it? instead of it can't be done. Because in today's time, if you say it can't be done while it happens in front of you, it's a very dangerous attitude, I think. So what, and what is your biggest challenge today? And I know uh, some of you listen to the Zone or the Wimlex podcast, the show we are doing together with a partner in Amsterdam. And Michael, uh, Michael was one of our first guests there. Uh, and I know I ask you this question in the podcast because it's so, it seems so clear because the business model is uh, uh, by far superior compared to the Rive online experience and others. And there's so many people demanding this service yep. because yes, I, I, I read about like 200 people or 200,000 people subscribed in the Netherlands, yep. not allowed in the app because you're like, uh, uh, you're like managing yep. offer and demand. So, so what is really the challenge to grow? So why, because there's so many people probably are giving you money for free, more or less. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, <laughs> Why don't yeah, you come yeah. to Kiel uh, if there's like nice guys asking for that? Okay, if you look at the, um, at the traditional models, when they start to do online, they just pick stuff that, is, that they create themselves, but they also pick sort of existing solutions. And we've said, now we have to create this from A to Z, own software, own supply chain. We built the cars ourselves, we built the frames, we built everything ourselves to make it really, really special for online groceries. And that's difficult to do, it takes a lot of time, and that's why we created the, or had the, uh, the, the, the waiting list. So what happened is that we had, when we opened our first city in uh, Holland, we had four of these little vans, and we had on day one 5,000 customers signing up. But with four vans and 5,000 customers, it's going to be a problem. So overnight we created a waiting list, yeah, so people got back on the waiting list, and every week we got two more vans and then we could let people in from the waiting list. We've got a lot of marketing prizes for that because waiting list probably is going to say, this is very special that you're on the waiting list, blah, blah, blah. No, it was sheer need because we had too many people. And until today, we have now 100,000 people on the waiting list and also in Germany, 20,000 because you just need to create the infrastructure yourself. Build the vans, build the warehouses, build the little city hubs. It just takes a lot of time. Are you like, uh, are you restricted to grow like from the uh, Dutch part into, in, into Germany or can you start a, uh, a hub in Hamburg or Berlin or Munich, uh, which yep. is then self-sustainable? Uh, it's completely separate operation. So we have an own team in Germany, in Dusseldorf. We have our own uh, fulfillment center in Viersen. We have all these little hubs. So it's completely separate from Holland. 
and Edeka is our buying partner in Germany and in Holland we have a sort of a buying combination that uh, provides us the product. And do, do you do your own product? Is there like a picnic milk brand already? Yeah, uh, yeah. so we have a brand, the, the, the famous brands that we have a, a private label, our own label and of course all the fruits and vegetables are our own. And then we have a sort of a, a, a basic uh, brand, low price. Oh, that, that's, ve that's very cool. And is there something that could help you if you're like asking now the crowd, is there, like, uh, is there like people you're looking for that can apply at Picnic right now? Absolutely. We're looking for all types of people uh, in all types of directions. So, of course, we're looking for developers, but we're also looking for smart people that uh, know operations because it's a really detailed operation. You have the products, you have its food, so it's a bit more difficult. You have three temperature zones. You have a lot of slotting, so uh, econometric type of uh, uh, questions. But we also need people in customer success. We need, I mean, we need people basically everywhere. Yeah. So more than happy. When I visited actually the picnic headquarter in, uh, in Amsterdam, it was uh, kind of surprising to me. So s some of you probably know the online experience when there's like the DHL guy coming with like 10 paper, paper bags and it's hard to, to carry it. And then he invited me for a tour uh, in the warehouse and uh, it was not a show. It, it looked like a show a little bit. And <laughs> there was like a, a girl with a picnic truck uh, uh, yeah. coming in and everything was like pre-prepared. It took them like, I don't know, 30 seconds to upload any, anything. Everything yeah. was like was very well thought through. And yep. it's something you don't see in many operations. If we, uh, if we are looking at operations of incumbents, they're going to old warehouses, using old warehouse structure, using like standard cars. Yep. And then they say, hey, it must do it because we, we, don't, we don't think we should be a developer of electric vehicles. So That's interesting. And because this person, with, uh, we call those runners, the delivery guys and girls, 30% is girls. And they're all sort of the same, so they're sort of the, the perfect son-in-laws or perfect daughter-in-laws. It's a really important element of our uh, delivery because if you deliver, let's say, electronics device and somebody comes at your door and he, he finishes a cigarette in your front yard, it's sort of okay, give me the device. But if it's food, it's completely different. It's your fresh milk and your cheese and your lettuce. So having this separate service-oriented person at the door, that's completely different from all the other logisticals parties because they save on the person and we say we need to invest in the person to have the better delivery at home. If that's the limitation of the business model that you're really uh, in need of finding the most fitting persons? It's not a limitation but you cannot go from 100 to 500 next day because it's I mean you need people and uh, so it's not a limitation but you build the infrastructure once it's there and uh, we now have five uh, fulfillment centers in Holland and we grow five percent week on week because now the infrastructure is there. Starting in Germany, uh, we're going to uh, probably also go to the Ruhrgebiet. Then, you, of course, you need to start a city, you need to have a fulfillment center, and you need to grow the infrastructure to, to start uh, selling more products. And maybe last questions uh, as we are running out of time. Uh, so how long does it take if you're starting a new city in Ruhrgebiet, for example? So finding a warehouse and doing the, all the hub stuff and trucks, blah, blah, blah. How long does it take to become, on an operational level, regional-wise, uh, profitable? Oh, profitable. I thought it would start to start up. Uh, uh, so if we decide today to go to Ruhrgebiet and uh, pick a city, it takes us six weeks to go live. So you have the building, you have the vehicles, you have the people trained, etc. And it takes about six months to be profitable in that city. Yeah, that is something uh, uh, some of you might know the Rive numbers. Uh, it took them like 10 years now, not even close uh, to the profitable uh, uh, barrier. So. Really, 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 I, 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 I would appreciate if you like kind of take the advice. So look into this kind of business model. It's really, if you see, if you uh, have seen me with like my open mouse with uh, Verena's views on the market, I have the same open mouse uh, with like the uh, impact of Picnic's business model in the biggest B2C uh, uh, market we are having. It's 200 million, just uh, 200 billion. Uh, just in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Germany. Maybe, no. maybe just to add to that, Alex, uh, is that the, the part that we're not sort of displaying too much today, especially not in Germany since we're only beginning, so Günstige Preise, Gratis Geliefert, is the most important now. But you also see in Germany that's stronger than in Holland that the sustainable part of things is bigger. Eh? So 100% electrical driving, no food waste because we only order what we, uh, uh, the customers have already bought. And that's the type of thing that is 
generating even more interest in Germany, we think. Yeah, yeah I think it, it will. And there's a lot of very, very interesting uh, uh, learnings in this business model. Not only uh, that the, the whole delivery cycle is much more uh, efficient. It makes the wow, the open mouse. Uh, uh, but big applause for Mikiel. Thank uh, you. Um, <laughs>